This is a brand new video that's just come out from Xiaomi showing their SU7 and its new autonomous driving features. Now it's actually really impressive but sadly they made it really fast in the video so what we're going to do is we're going to slow it down today, break it down and see if we can deep dive in and see if there's any details that they may be hid by making it such a fast video. Before we get into it I just want to tell you a little bit about the car and an overview of what they said on their huge launch for the SU7. This is going to be Xiaomi's first car and they did a huge launch presentation for the car for how they're building it, the new technology that's going into it, and a huge part of it was autonomous driving. Next. I will come to autonomous driving. I was really impressed by the presentation. They gave so much detail. It was about three hours long. And one of the biggest parts of it was autonomous driving. So what I'm going to tell you today is a little bit about this car and a little bit about the AI and auto tech that they're using to get this thing to autonomously drive around in these videos. A few specs about this car first. So this has apparently a 101 kilowatt hour battery and can get an estimated range of 800 kilometers, which is absolutely crazy. It could do 0 to 62 in 2 0.78 seconds and up to 265 kilometers an hour that just destroys all of the competition it also has a really good looking interior and exterior overall the car looks great but we're here for the autonomy features and that was such a big part of this presentation they gave three reasons that their autonomy is going to be world class leading by the end of 2024 by combining an adaptive BEV or bird's eye view, a super res occupancy network and road mapping foundational model, which does road topology in real time, this should apparently give them world-class full self-driving. The sensors in this car are as follows. 13 HD cameras for a full 360 view, a 200 meter forward facing LIDAR, three millimeter wave radars, 12 ultrasonic radars, a gray sensor, multi GNSS or global navigation satellite system, and 508 tops of computing power or terror operations per second. Woo! This is obviously going very far away from what Tesla are doing where they have taken away the ultrasonic sensors and they are just focusing on HD cameras or their Tesla vision system. By putting all of these bits of data together, the hardest thing they're going to find is syncing them all in and making sure there's no double negatives or something where the LiDAR saying there's something there but the cameras can't see it. What does it do? What one does it follow? That's what Tesla have tried to totally eliminate by going vision only. But let's have a look at this video and see, is it really that good? Let's start off with the urban or city driving video. Now, I was really excited to see these videos, but I was a little bit disappointed that they were really short and they had sped them up to an incredible amount where you couldn't really tell what was going on. This view here gives us the view of what the car can see and what it's going to show us on the screens. You can see there's a driver in this one, but apparently he doesn't ever touch the wheel. He doesn't ever take control. And I do kind of believe that. Now, obviously, I don't know these roads. I don't know how Chinese roads work at all. So this is all going to be just a, a general look and a general view of everything. But what you can see is some cars popping in and out of the screen. Uh, the frame rate is, of course, very low because they sped it up so fast. Um, but it's really impressive the whole thing is impressive i like the view that it gives you you can see here at the top it's giving you some sort of um navigational to say that it's going on the right hand side they're zooming in here on the right as well to show some pedestrians coming out that the camera does pick up and it does show on the screen it doesn't show that that door is open or anything which the teslas can do now so I'm intrigued to see if that will be added on because apparently this has a huge, huge level of detail down to 0.1 of a meter when driving in close spaces, which is really impressive. Again, here we've got another zoom in as it's creating this world by itself. This isn't using Ultra HD maps or anything like that. It is actually creating this world as it goes. You can see it's putting out the parking. You can see it's doing a right turn on its own. And yeah, it looks like it's doing it really well. It's not picking up as many things on the street and as many things on the road that I think the Tesla full self drive shows and you can also see that from the sides Jesus this bit goes really fast you can see from the sides it doesn't show lots at all it's mainly focused on what's in front so here we go this is apparently on a very after a very snowy day a snowstorm those boxes there that you can see again they aren't shown in the uh, in the screen at all and the man there actually wasn't shown on the screen at all except for maybe one little frame so it doesn't seem to be picking up everything on the uh, uh on the roads as the tesla does the tesla definitely picks up human stuff a lot better this gets incredibly close to that bus and i'm i'm not gonna lie i think that looks uncomfortably close but they see the driver seems to be happy with it and he's carrying on i would have thought the car would have gone round more like the car in front of it did uh but apparently it didn't here again we've got someone coming across and crossing the road and you can tell that the car has picked it up and it starts slowing down here 
but not very fast. It's still going 24 kilometers. Uh, so it's slowing down maybe about 10 kilometers there. It doesn't allow the person to finish walking across the road before it continues on. But maybe, again, in China, maybe you don't have to. And maybe that's the law. I'm not 100% sure on that. Let's have another look then as we come up to this really fast bit here. We've got the cones. The cones are in place. And is it picking up that pedestrian there next to the cones and the car? I can't quite see. Yes, he is just on there. And there is some, some things popping up on the right as well. They may be bikes or something. But you see there, as soon as it went past everything, it kind of just disappeared from the map, which I do find interesting. They focused very much on like a, a forward-facing system. And uh, along the sides, it doesn't seem to be rendering or showing the world or showing everything that we can see uh, through this video. Let's have a look here at a turn. So again, an unprotected left turn, I think this is. And I'm not sure what they're trying to show on the right camera here. Maybe it's the car going into the lane on the right. It's really hard to tell on all of these. But just because of the speed that they seem to be filming this at. So here it's going for an overtake. And it goes out on its own. Indicates out. And it goes around him. Very nicely done. It's picking up some cars on the other side of the road as well. But again, it's not kind of showing everything. As it gets undertaken here and a car comes in front of it. The car does break, but it doesn't seem to like overly react to anything. It seems quite smooth, seems quite realistic, and then coming down slowly here to a stop as it flicks us through all of the good, interesting bit. And here we go again. So we've come up to like a really busy crossing here with loads of people on the road. The car does come down to a very, very slow speed and happily squeezes past these people. Nine kilometers an hour going here, so really slow past these people. And the other cars cutting in in front of it. I can imagine driving in China is quite tricky. It definitely looks quite tricky. But this seems to be doing it really nicely. Again, here's a really interesting one. A turn on the right here. We've got loads of people on the right-hand side of the car. But the, the screen's not actually showing it. It's showing some of the bikers, some of the pedestrians. Not showing everything. But the driver doesn't seem worried, doesn't seem concerned. Let's the car do its thing. And it slowly pushes around as it goes here. I have obviously turned off the music because the music in slow-mo would have sounded crazy. But I do like how it shows as much as it can. I like the full screen navigation here. I'm just looking out to see if there's anything like hidden in that we can see or we can peep at. Again, you can see other cars giving a lot more space for this bus. The car gives it a tiny bit of space there, but then starts steering back into the bus. It makes incredibly close calls, which you could say is impressive but I, I think I'd feel a little bit uneasy about it to be totally honest again here sat in traffic this is another left turn now the the arrows on the roads from the, from the lane that he just came from said you could only go forward and right so I'm not 100% sure if this is allowed to do his left turn but he's going for it anyway there is a car on its left in the rear that it looks like to me it just cut off there I don't know if you saw that but in the screen it showed there was a car on its left and behind it Again here, another fast forward as it comes to the end of an urban environment. Coming up to another pedestrian here that's kind of half on the road. Some cyclists coming on. And it is, in fact, speeding up past them. It's not slowing down for these at all. It's just going around them. It's, it's impressive stuff, I've got to say. It is very impressive. It's still speeding up as it comes to this junction. And there's loads of bikers and stuff uh, to the right of it. It seems to be in the middle of the lanes here. And that is the end of the urban driving segment. Moving on now, this is more impressive in my opinion. The driver actually parks at the bottom here and the car's going to drive itself up to a cafe that's on the roof. Now, I didn't quite understand in the, in the uh, what he was talking about here because wouldn't you want to go to the cafe on the roof? I'm not 100% sure. But it apparently goes through the bollard here and makes its way up about three flights of 360 turns here and look at how tight it is it's really really tight and it's it's impressively done now interestingly enough for this part there's a car that comes up i think all of this must be scripted uh there's a car here that comes up they kind of meet each other and it, it looks pretty worrying the autonomous car backs off the audi goes past it and then the autonomous car just carries on as if nothing happened if that is real that is so impressive and this is kind of what i was hoping uh, the Tesla would be able to do in Smart Summon. It lets the human walk past it there, which I think is the driver who just went in a lift or something. And now this is really strange. So as you can see, there's obviously a drone on top. 
The car comes around, and I'm not sure how it's picked this parking space, but it goes to this area here, finds the most awkward car parking space on the right. You can see there's a space on the left of it, and the other spaces have cones. So I think what they've done here is set up a scenario where there's a van unloading something, the car can't park in the other spaces because there's some cones, except there is that one space to its right now that it could have gone into. And instead it goes into the most awkward car parking space, but it parks itself perfectly. It's really impressive. I'm sure all of that was scripted and set up. Um, well, it must have been because there was stuff all on the road and stuff so that it couldn't go in certain areas. And then this here shows apparently the smart summon where the guy is on his phone and the car's already coming to him. So he must have summoned it a while ago. It's a really cool video. I love the look of the car as well. But it doesn't really give us a real world example. And there's lots to be left unseen so far of this autonomous system. The final clip of autonomous driving they show us is the car parking in a mechanical parking space. Now this one's quite impressive. You can see the car pulls up to some spaces, it shows it on the tablet, and you're able to pick the, the parking spaces before the car has even driven past them. So currently in a Tesla, for example, you have to drive past the spaces, it kind of registers them, then you can pick. This seems to be able to see the world in front of it, all around it, and tell you that there are car parking spaces without driving past. And now this is really impressive. Look at how tight this is. This space is just 0.05 of a meter wider than the car so the car's two meters this is 2.05 and you can see how well it parks with such crazy precision they were really excited about the car putting its wing mirrors in but you can actually see from that clip it didn't need to do that at all and that was the last of all of the autonomy clips that they showed us in this presentation so let me know in the comment section overall were you satisfied with this are you slightly concerned that they decided to show really fast sped up videos or were you just completely unsatisfied by it and you thought that it didn't look great at all i'm definitely in the mixed bag i'm gonna play the videos in their entirety at the speed that they showed them now let me know in the comments i'll be replying to all of them don't forget to subscribe and become a member if you want to support this channel as we go into 2024 and we turn not just from tesla videos but into all car ai and ev videos until next time don't forget drive safe Now let's take a look.